Tankers, I'm Drudel's Blitz, and today we'll be talking about the best tier 10 medium line to currently grind in the game. Now, as you can see from the replay, this is the WZ121. But before I do talk about the tank, I just want to say that this is a very opinionated video. Many of you probably have your own preferences on what you think is the best tier 10 in the game, and I definitely agree that there are many, many insanely strong tier 10 mediums currently on the battlefield, like the 62A, the Progetto 65, the E50M, all these vehicles are very strong contenders, and I wouldn't say anything bad about those vehicles, but in my opinion, the 121 just puts the cherry on top of the tree. Somebody telling you all the reasons why I feel that this vehicle should be the number one line to grind if you don't have it in the medium class. So make sure to stay tuned in, I'm going to get right into it. Now the first big reason that a lot of people don't know about this tank, which makes it really, really strong, is actually the armor profile. This is one of the strongest tanks at tier 10 in the armor department. Now the reason for that being is because when you look at the upper plate of it, you can see, yeah, it looks pretty green. But you have to remember that that's still 250 millimeters that you're looking at of an upper plate. That is very, very thick, judging that if you wiggle it and angle it a little bit, you can see that upper plates nest sitting at around 260 millimeters thick. The sides, sides are still 300 millimeters. Now, the front is thick enough that you're actually going to bounce most standard rounds from vehicles like an E5, an E6. Pretty much most tier 10 vehicles are actually going to struggle to penetrate your tank. And then you got to remember, well, this vehicle's got six degrees of gun depression. If you're using your gun depression and an angle, that's sitting at 310 millimeters thick. And you look at the turret armor of this tank, and it's still... 300 millimeters all around the vehicle, 400, 500. The turret is one of the toughest things to penetrate. And even if you do load the premium ammo, you can see it's still very hard to pen the tank. It's still 270 millimeters thick, really at thickest on the vehicle, which, yeah, is pretty easy to pen if you can get a shot on it. But if you're wiggling that turret back and forth, good luck penning through it. Now, it does have cupolas on the top, but you can still see they're not very weak cupolas, and neither are they very big. The edges of the cupola are sitting at around 300 millimeters thick, so you're going to struggle greatly to penetrate that part. And the thing I really like to do in this vehicle is wiggle it back and forth, because as you can see, it just makes that armor profile so much more thick in the front. Now, the side armor on the vehicle isn't anything to brag about at 80 millimeters thick. It's just like every other Russian vehicle. But the frontal armor is something that just makes it so much more strong compared to a vehicle like the 62A or an Object 140. As many of you know, the main reason why this tank is so strong is because of the 420 average damage it deals. Now, if that wasn't enough, also it has 3,440 damage per minute, which means that if you're going up against tier 10 heavies, let's say like an E5, that vehicle is going to lose about 700 damage per minute to your tank, which means not only are you dealing more damage per shot to a vehicle like the E5, you're also dealing a crazy amount of more damage per minute. You're going to come out on top every single time, and you're in a medium tank. You shouldn't be able to fight heavies like that. Not to mention, if you're using your 6 degrees again depression, hiding your hull armor, using your turret you're also going to bounce 60 70 percent of the shots fired by that e5 he's going to have to load premium ammo and your shells are easily going to overmatch a vehicle like that and that's what makes this tank so menacing in the battlefield not to mention its standard pen of 245 is nothing to be ashamed of that's going to pretty much go through any of the big german super heavy slower plates i will say the premium ammo sitting at 290 is not spectacular in fact it is one of the worst in the class however if you load uh, calibrated, it's going to go up to 319, and for my personal experience running the tank, you're never going to struggle to penetrate, let's say, the turret of an E100, or the superstructure of a Jag Panzer E100, you're really not going to struggle that much, so you still have enough pen, and you still have literally an 8 second reload with this gun, which is still way better than vehicles like a Chieftain Mark VI, many other vehicles, you just have such a crazy damage per minute. And the nice thing about having more damage and having a larger caliber gun, which a lot of people really don't think about, is that you have the ability to track a lot more shells. If I'm running a 62A and I'm shooting at the track wheel of a Chieftain Mark VI, I would say I have a 50-50% chance if it's going to track the tank or it's just going to hit the side armor and, you know, it's going to take 310 off. If I'm running a 121, I have almost a 100% chance that not only is it going to track the vehicle, it's also going to damage it because it does have that much higher caliber of a gun. And that's something that's really nice because when there's an E100 or somebody pushing on you, before they can get around the corner, if you're in a tank like a 62A again, 
you're not going to track that E100 90% of the time. If you're in a 1-2-1, one, one, you can almost guarantee that you're going to track that E100 before he gets around the corner, put it on your fast reloader, and you can almost permanently track a tank like that. Face hug it, use your armor, you're going to bounce 50-60% of the shells off your turret, and that's what makes it just such a tough vehicle to go against. And the crazy thing is it has a 0.91 second aiming time. Now that is the best aiming time out of every tier 10 medium in the game. The thing I find very ironic about this tank is while it may have the best aiming time out of every tier 10 medium in the game, it has the worst dispersion value at 0.335. Now, that's definitely not a terrible dispersion value, but I definitely wouldn't sit at the back of the map and try sniping vehicles across because you're just not going to hit your shells that accurately. But the thing is, that's not a weakness on this vehicle. In fact, I feel that is a strong point. If you see a WZ-121 camping at the back of the map, Honestly, they shouldn't be playing the game, because the way this tank is meant to be played is in the front lines, almost like an aggressive medium tank, and that's how I play it. You'll notice in these replays here, I'm going to be very, very aggressive, and that's because you've got that big alpha and you have an amazing aiming time. What that gives you the ability to do is, let's say a T110E4 is aiming at you. Now, if you're in a vehicle like, let's say, an E100 and you're aiming at that T110E4's cupola, that might be a bit of a struggle to aim in at. You don't have the best aim time again you don't have the best dispersion value but as well you're not aimed in so that's something that's really a big struggle and that c124 is going to be aiming at you that whole time he's got superior penetration easily going to pen your tank when you pull out and try and snap him a vehicle like the wz121 it has that excellent aiming time so you can just pull out snap that shot immediately because it's always going to be zeroed in and as i said dispersion really doesn't matter in close ranges because if your reticle is on that weak spot and it's covering that entire weak spot you know it's going to hit it however i will say the dispersion factors while moving rotating the turret stuff like that is not spectacular on this vehicle in fact if you're driving this vehicle at its top speed of 56 kilometers per hour the chances of you actually hitting the enemy are about the same chances of running a 183 in gravity mode shooting at a sheridan flying in the sky so about a zero percent chance but onto the mobility of this vehicle, it actually does have some very strong numbers going for it. Because this tank actually has that really good frontal armor, it makes for a pretty good rammer. I was actually playing up against a Sheridan today, trying to get some gameplay for this video, and I ended up ramming that Sheridan for about 750 hit points, only taking about 100 in return. So it is an excellent rammer just because of that amazing frontal armor. As well, it can go up to 56 kilometers per hour, 20 in reverse, which is very, very quick. And as well, has an excellent power to weight ratio of 29.74 which means that on medium terrain soft terrain hard terrain you're going to be able to easily climb over the hills stay at your top speed and you're not really going to have to worry that much about your terrain resistance however i will say on traverse speed it actually does vary quite a bit on soft terrain compared to hard terrain on hard terrain you have an excellent traverse speed of 64.39 However, on soft terrain, you have a 35.42 terrain resistance. So on sand, it is not going to turn very quick. But the nice thing is, it actually has an excellent turret traverse speed at 48.60. So even while the tank might not be turning super fast on sand or softer surfaces, it can still turn its turret very, very effectively. Also, it actually has a very nice camouflage rating because... It is such a low-down vehicle, it's just like the 62A, just like the Object 140. It's a lot longer, but it's still very low-down, so it's got a 29.3% concealment ratio. Now, before I say to grind this line, there is one big issue with this tank line. It's not the Tier 10, I love the WZ-121, but the Tier 9, the WZ-120, is one of the toughest tanks to run in the game. And the reason for that being is because of the lackluster penetration with the 122 at 220 millimeters, and as well, the gun has three degrees of gun depression. So it's a little bit tougher to run that vehicle than the WZ-121. But I will say that three degrees, when you get that six degrees on the Tier 10, it makes a colossal difference on feeling, and you're never going to complain about only have six degrees of gun depression ever again. But other than that, the line is great. The T34-2 is a wonderful tank. The T34-1 as well, one of my favorite tier 7s in the game. It's got excellent penetration. It carries a tier 8 medium gun like the T54 Mod 1 in a tier 7 tank. I have a video on that vehicle if you want to check it out. But honestly, I love the whole line. Even though the tier 9 doesn't have great gun depression, I still like it just because it carries such a large caliber gun. 
but honestly, if you don't have this tank, I would definitely suggest to go for it. It is the best tier 10 medium, in my opinion, to grind for, just because it's so strong, so aggressive, and it's really feared on the battlefield. Now, of course, as I said in the beginning, there are many other medium tanks that perform a lot better. And in fact, I feel that I perform better in a Progetto 46 or an E50M over the WZ121. But the thing is, this video is for people that don't have many mediums in the game or they're currently trying to grind a new tank line. The thing is, is that an E50M and a Progetto, they require immense amounts of skill to play. You have to know how to maximize your damage per minute, penetration, E50M, you have to know how to angle it, where to push it, when to rush, when to stay. There are so many more skill factors that go into those tanks other than the point and click ability in this vehicle with the amazing damage from it, the really good penetration, the amazing armor. This is just such a strong tank that I feel that it really outclasses the other ones for a beginner and, to be honest, an experienced player as well. I can get probably 5,000 damage games in this tank every one to five games I play in it, so it is a really, really good tank, and personally, it is my favorite tier 10 medium in the game. So let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Of course, this is an opinionated video. I cannot stress that enough. So don't act like I'm saying this is quoted the best tier 10 medium in the game, but in my opinion, I will say this is the best line to currently grind. So let me know what you guys think in the comments down below, and other than that, I'll see you in the next